This is the new 2020 Hyundai Sonata, and it's the fully redesigned version of Hyundai's midsize sedan. These days, everybody is buying SUVs and crossovers, but if you're in the market for a midsize sedan, this one has some rather interesting quirks and some impressive features and some not so great stuff too. And today I'm going to review the 2020 Sonata and show you what I mean. First, a little background. The Sonata first went on sale here in North America for the 1989 model year, which means it's been around for more than 30 years. But it wasn't until the 2011 model that the Sonata really started to gain sales momentum. It was finally a truly competitive car to take on established rivals like the Toyota Camry, the Honda Accord, and others. And this model continues the trend. The 2020 Sonata has been completely redesigned inside and out, and it's the sixth generation of the Sonata to be sold here in North America. Pricing starts around $24,000, but this is a fully loaded, top-of-the-line Sonata Limited model with a sticker price of just under $35,000. The latest Sonata has a high-performance version and a hybrid model coming in a few months, but right now it offers two engine choices, and pay attention because this is a weird one. The base engine is a 2.5-liter four-cylinder that makes 191 horsepower, or you can upgrade to a turbocharged 1.6-liter four-cylinder that makes 180 horsepower. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. The upgrade engine has less power <laughs> than the base engine, which is a weird quirk of the Sonata. Another one is the styling, which we'll get to in a minute. And today, I'm going to cover everything else about the new Sonata, too. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of it, and I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then, I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the new Sonata with undoubtedly its quirkiest quirk, and that would be the fact that I can move it while I'm standing here. All right, check this out. To start this process, you have to first press this button on the key fob, and that will remote start the car. Not too unusual. A lot of newer cars have that, and the Sonata does too. Now, once you have it started, you press this button on the key fob, which has a top of a car and then a P with an arrow, and then the Sonata will begin moving forward. Now, you might be wondering why exactly would anyone want this feature? And it's a reasonably good question, but there are situations when you might use it. For instance, if you're in a tight parking space or a tight garage and there's not enough room to easily open the door and get into your car, just use your key fob to move it forward and then you can have more room. And of course, you can also use your key fob to move it backwards. Just press the opposite button and the car will start reversing in case you want to move it in the other direction. And you can completely control this from the key fob. I'm not in the car. I'm not touching anything. I'm just standing here. Now, of course, I know what you're thinking, which is, well, what happens if the car is about to hit something? <laughs> Will it actually hit something? So let's take a look and give it a try. I'm now pressing the forward and it's going forward and I'm gonna try to walk out in front of it. <laughs> and it stops. It actually senses that I was there and it stops and it doesn't move any more forward. If I move out of the way, of course, the car will continue its path going forward once I hold the button down again. Now, you may be wondering, how do you stop it otherwise when there's not someone walking out in front of it? And the answer is, just let off the P button on the key fob, and it comes to a complete stop. Pretty easy, actually. Now, I've shown you this feature in a few other cars, the new BMW M760i luxury sedan and the Tesla Model 3 Performance, but they're both way more expensive than the Sonata. For only $35,000, this is the cheapest car where you have this cool party trick. And next up, our next interesting quirk in the Sonata is that the sound system comes preloaded with sounds. And I don't mean music, 
I mean sounds. Move over to the sounds of nature icon in the infotainment system, tap it, and then you have several different options for nature sounds that you can listen to. I'm going to start with lively forest, which sounds like this. Next, you have calm sea waves, which sounds like this. And next, you have rainy day, which sounds like this. And next, there's Open Air Cafe, kind of an odd one, but anyway, it sounds like this. And next, Warm Fireplace, which sounds like this. But the weirdest one is definitely the last one. That would be Snowy Village. What exactly does a snowy village sound like? Apparently this. Ah, yes, a nice snowy village. Anyway, the theory here, I guess, is if you're driving along and you don't want to listen to the radio or to music or podcast, you can instead listen to these soothing sounds of nature, including my personal favorite nature sound, an open-air cafe. <laughs> and next up, another Sonata quirk would be the blind spot cameras. You have your usual cameras in the infotainment system in the center screen, nothing too weird there, but when you put on your turn signal, a camera turns on in the gauge cluster, showing your blind spot in whatever direction you've just signaled. This is a brilliant idea that allows you to see if there are cars behind you without having to resort to a dangerous over-the-shoulder check where you take your eyes off the road. It's it's a brilliant feature and of course signal the other direction and the other side of the gauge cluster puts on a camera showing the blind spot on the other side. I've now shown you this feature in a few Kia and Hyundai models. It is truly brilliant and I really hope every automaker adopts it. It's a huge safety improvement, one of the very best I've seen in recent years and whenever I get out of a car that has that feature and back into my car, I'm always thinking I really wish I had those turn signal blind spot cameras. And next up I'm going to move on to another notable Sonata quirk, and that would be the front end styling. But I'm going to start with the headlights, and specifically the running light. The running light in front doesn't just go along the bottom of the headlight, but rather it comes up on this line right here, sort of going halfway up the hood, and then it kind of fades out and stops. But then after the light fades out, you can see that this line is carried down the rest of the body, which is something I really haven't seen before, a very distinctive Sonata trait. Now, I actually like this idea. You can see in the dark, it gives the Sonata a very particular light signature that doesn't match any other car. It's kind of a cool look, but it's certainly been talked about a lot as an unusual touch in the new Sonata. But nothing is more unusual in terms of this car's styling than the front end. This car has this giant wide front grille, and it comes to these weird points at the end that kind of jut out. It doesn't look as strange on a dark colored car like this one, but on a lighter car, it looks like it has a big, wide fish mouth in front, and it definitely seems like the latest Sonata is a little bit the victim of some overstyling. And next up, we move under the hood in the new Sonata, where you can see this one is equipped with a turbo engine with Smart Stream G. <laughs> what is Smart Stream G, you might ask? Nobody knows. Least of all, the kind of people who buy a Sonata who won't care about that. But this car has it. Now, Sonata owners may care about the weird engine choices for this vehicle. Like I mentioned, the base engine is a 2.5 liter four cylinder with 191 horsepower, or you can upgrade to the top trim levels that have a 1.6 turbo four cylinder with 180 horsepower. Less power in the better engine. Now, it is worth noting that the optional engine has more torque than the base engine. This powertrain has 195 pound feet, whereas the base engine has about 
180. So the optional engine has 10 less horsepower, but 15 more pound-feet of torque, and Hyundai says that will make people choose the optional engine. Personally, I think acceleration is going to be pretty much identical with either engine. Now, you might be thinking, well, maybe the upgraded engine gets better fuel economy than the base engine. The optional engine is smaller, after all, 1.6 liters versus 2.5. But that's not true either. The base engine gets 32 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving. The optional engine gets 31 miles per gallon. So if you spend more money to get the optional engine, you get less horsepower and less fuel economy, which is definitely an interesting quirk of the Sonata. And next up, moving back inside for some more interesting quirks and features, starting with the fact that the Sonata always tells you the current weather. It's in the gauge cluster next to the temperature, the time, your speedometer. It has the current weather. You can see it's hazy right now and it says hazy. The weird thing here is you don't really need the car to tell you the current weather because, you know, you're driving the car. You can see what the weather is. It would probably be more helpful if it showed you the future weather, but I will admit I do like the idea of weather in the gauge cluster next to your time and temperature. It seems pretty logical. With that said, one issue with the weather in the gauge cluster is that it's not always exactly right. For example, right now it says cloudy and, um, well... <laughs> Yeah, so maybe it needs a little bit more fine tuning before you're really ready to start looking at that instead of, you know, looking at the actual weather as you drive the car. <laughs> And next, let's talk Sonata interior. I have to say, I'm kind of mixed about this interior. Generally, it is a pretty nice place to be, and there are some real bright spots. For instance, the turn signal stalks feel good and look good with these kind of beveled ends to them. Also, the climate controls, the buttons and switches look and feel really nice. But there are also some low points in this interior, too. For example, there's a lot of plastic over on the dashboard, this textured stuff that doesn't look that great. Same deal with the steering wheel center. So this interior is kind of a mix bag of good and bad. I wouldn't call it the best in class, but it's certainly far from the worst. It's a pretty decent place to spend time. Next up, a few interesting buttons and switches in here. One is the gear lever, which is no longer a lever, but actually these four buttons in the center console, you have park over on the left, reverse, neutral, and drive, and that's how you go between gears. More and more cars are switching to these push button shifters, and the Sonata is another one. And next up, another unusual control in this car is the one for the heated and cooled seats, because it's integrated into the climate controls. This little switch over on the left and right of the climate controls will turn on or off your heated or cooled seats. You push up to turn on your heated seat. You keep pushing up for more and then you push down to turn on your cooled seat. Same deal, just keep pushing down for higher levels of cooled seat. This is by no means a problem and in fact I think it makes intuitive sense to integrate the heated and cooled seat controls into the climate controls. I just haven't seen it before and thought it was worth mentioning. And next up another notable control in the center console is the drive mode switch which is quite large. It's like two Two inches wide. Strange considering not too many Sonata owners will ever use it. One thing I like when you use that switch to move into sport mode, there's like an explosion in the gauge cluster, an explosion to signify all the sporty driving you'll be doing in your 180 horsepower Sonata. And next up, speaking of the gauge cluster, it's worth noting that it is a screen. No more analog gauges in the Sonata. You have a full screen in here, and it's reasonably configurable, although not as much as you might expect, considering that it's a screen. A few other automakers give you the ability to move things around and really configure the gauge cluster more, depending on your preferences. And next up, here's another interesting gauge cluster item. If you get out of the car with the engine running and you take the key with you, the car will shut off after 30 minutes. And the moment you get out, a timer appears in the gauge cluster to let you know how much longer you have until the car turns off. I guess the theory here is that people may occasionally park the car and walk away forgetting to turn it off and they don't want it to run out of gas or cause other problems, so there's an auto shutoff feature after 30 minutes of idling with no key. And next up, we move on to the infotainment system, which in this car is pretty good. Very responsive, as you can see, instantaneous, among the very best of these I've seen, just like a smartphone. Tesla used to have a huge advantage with responsiveness to touch, but now basically every automaker also has a really responsive infotainment screen, including this car. And you can see the navigation system, very easy to move it around, has very simple pinch to zoom, just like you'd expect in a smartphone map. You can also see that as you move the map away from your current position, 
English, and it shows with a little line exactly how far your current map view is from where you're sitting in case you want to plan a trip and see how many miles it is. That's a pretty cool little touch I haven't seen before. And next up, it's worth knowing that in addition to being responsive, the infotainment screen is also very intuitive. Your home screen has these three panels. You can configure them to be basically whatever you want. Right now it's showing the map, the radio, and the weather, but you can change them if you want to. But then from there you can slide over and see all of the other controls in sort of a smaller format for stuff you're less likely to use more frequently. It's a pretty good way to do it makes things easy. And next up, let's talk about some of the interesting quirks and features of the infotainment system, including possibly the strangest configurable item I have ever seen. All right, you're driving along and you squirt your windshield with washer fluid. In a normal car, if you have the climate control set to send outside air into the cabin, then you will smell this washer fluid. But in the Sonata, you can set the infotainment system to turn off the outside air temporarily after you wash your windshield so the odor of the washer fluid doesn't get into the car. And then after a few seconds, I guess, it goes back to normal and can send outside air back in. I've never seen that configurable before, and I can't imagine what crazy letters Hyundai got in order to make that a feature, but it is one in case you really don't want to smell washer fluid for those five times a year when you're using it. And next up, another interesting Sonata quirk, there's a blue light filter. So when it's dark out, you can limit the amount of blue light in the infotainment system to make it easier on your eyes. And you can actually adjust how much you want to limit the blue light, which is a pretty cool feature. I haven't seen this in any other infotainment systems except in Hyundai models, but it can be good if you're driving a lot at night and reduce the strain on your eyes. And next up, we move on to the back seat in the new Sonata, where the most notable item back here is the fact that it is surprisingly roomy. I have the front seats where I would sit. I'm pretty tall and I have more than enough space back here for my knees. I got a lot of headroom. This is a good back seat, especially for a midsize sedan. Very much has room for most families. Other than the interior space back here though, there is literally nothing interesting about the back seat of the Sonata. The only thing you could say is even mildly interesting is the fact that there is only one storage net on the back of the passenger seat. On the back of the driver's seat, you don't get that. I see that in some cars. I find it to be a bizarre place to cut costs, but some companies do it. And next up, we move on to the Sonata's trunk, which is actually kind of annoying because there's no trunk popper back here. You have the car unlocked. There's no place that you can go to open the trunk from the outside, which is kind of annoying. But there is a feature in the infotainment system called Smart Trunk. If you turn it on, you can set the trunk to open whenever you walk up to it with your key in your pocket. And so I will do that now. Uh, except that I've actually tried it for a few minutes here and it doesn't seem to be working. So pretty much the only way to get into the trunk, there's a button inside the car or you hold the button on the key fob, really not ideal. But anyway, once you do get the trunk open using the key fob, you'll see that it is a fairly standard trunk, roomier than I would expect actually for a midsize sedan, but a relatively normal trunk nonetheless. A few interesting items worth noting back here. One, you have little tabs you can pull that will release the rear seats so you can fold them down. The problem is the tabs only release the seats. They don't fold them. You have to pull the tab, then walk around to the back seat and fold the seat down. It's kind of an annoying two-step process that could be solved with just one tab. You pull it and the seat drops down. The other interesting item with the trunk and the seats folding is that when the seats are down, you can see the opening for the trunk is actually relatively small. A lot of cars have several more inches of opening for this pass-through between the trunk and the seats for larger items. But in the Sonata, for some reason, it's kind of constricted a little bit on the sides and it's a lot narrower than the actual trunk itself, which seems odd. Now, another annoying thing about this trunk is closing it. And I don't mean there's no power trunk closer. I wouldn't expect that at this price point. Instead, there's no like latch or handle you can use to close the trunk on the inside to make sure that your hands don't get dirty. So you basically have to close the trunk by touching the paint. If the car is dirty, you'll get that dirt on your hands. If the car is clean, then you'll 
you'll get fingerprints on your newly washed car. It's a simple thing to get right, and it's a shame this car doesn't. Now, with that said, with the trunk closed, I really like the rear end styling of this car. You have this light bar going across the back, which is the new luxury vehicle trend, and I like to see it on the Sonata too. And it looks really good in the dark. You can see this light bar lit up very nice. I think the rear end styling of this car is very distinctive in a good way especially compared to the front end. And so those are the quirks and features of the 2020 Hyundai Sonata Limited. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the new Sonata. Now, a couple things I wanna mention before I get into driving experience. One, I kind of made fun of the engine choices and it is kind of ridiculous that the upgrade engine has less power, but there is a high performance version of this car coming called the N-Line, which is reported to have almost 300 horsepower, should be pretty good. And there will also be a hybrid version coming really soon, actually, in the next couple of months. Uh, which is also gonna be compelling for people who want more fuel economy. So there will be more engine choices. Another thing I wanna mention, I wanna talk about self-driving for a little bit. This car has quite a sophisticated self-driving system. Now at higher speeds, you have to tap the wheel every so often, like every other car that has a steering assist system. But I was finding that at lower speeds in bumper to bumper traffic, the car would do its thing for a long time. It would slow down, speed up with traffic. If we came to a stop, it would stop for 10, 12 seconds, then restart, it would steer. Um, really, really, really excellent system for bumper to bumper traffic, steering, driving, braking, starting, stopping. Um, one of the best I've seen, especially at this price point, pretty strong. As for the driving experience itself, I have to say, to be honest, there are pros and cons, let's put it that way. Um, but the biggest drawback to me is definitely the performance. For $35,000, you can now buy a Camry that does zero to 60 in like five point something seconds. This car is way off the mark in terms of acceleration and performance. It feels slow, it is slow, especially at this price point. And I get that the performance version is coming, but I think it's gonna be almost like a year between the launch of the Sonata and the launch of the performance version, whereas the Camry launches with all of its engines pretty much right away. And so it feels like for a while they're really holding back on this lineup and they shouldn't be. With that said, two really important things. One, uh, it's very comfortable in here. The ride is very comfortable, very soft. The seats are comfortable, plush. They feel great, supportive, good to sit on. Could use a little more thigh support, but it's not really that big of a problem. This car is also unusually quiet. For a mid-size sedan, especially at this price point, I've been surprised at how quiet it is, especially in terms of wind noise. Road noise, you hear the tire about average for a mid-size car, um, but wind noise, don't hear anything no loud music from cars around you, no construction noise or airplanes overhead. It's pretty good at keeping that stuff out. As for handling, pretty simple, normal stuff, like every other mid-sized car, not very athletic. When you put it into sport mode, it does tighten up the throttle response, it doesn't seem to do all that much else. There's a lot of great benefits to this car, a lot of great things about it. Um, it's just that not that many people care about mid-sized sedans anymore. I've got two and a half million views and counting on my review of the Hyundai Palisade, which is the new Hyundai mid-sized family SUV. I strongly suspect the Sonata isn't going to do as well. The market just isn't quite there like it used to be even just five or six years ago. And so that's the 2020 Hyundai Sonata. It's not beautiful, it's not fast, but it has some pretty compelling stuff. There's a lot of technology in this car for one, and there's a nice comfortable driving experience. Pricing is pretty reasonable, and you get Hyundai's famously long warranty, and it has some rather interesting quirks and features. If I was shopping for a mid-size sedan, this would definitely make my short list. And now it's time to give the new Sonata a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, it's fine, could be better, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 8.2 seconds, which gives it a 1 out of 10. Handling is average for a mid-size sedan, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Fun factor is basically non-existent. That's hardly the point of this car, and it gets a 1 out of 10. Finally, cool factor, and once again, there's not really any. This car has some cool tricks, but ultimately it's just a family sedan, and it gets a 1 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 11 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This is shocking well equipped and it gets a 9 out of 10. Comfort is normal for a car like this and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, the interior is only okay, but Hyundai's excellent warranty is good peace of mind and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is average for a mid-size sedan and it gets a 6 out of 10. Finally, value, and this is a good one. It has a lot of equipment and good interior room and a relatively affordable package. It just needs more power. It gets a 7 out of 10 for a total daily score of 35 out of 50. Added up in the Doug score is 46 out of 100. 
I've never reviewed a family sedan before, but here's how it ranks against a bunch of other family cars. The Sonata is excellent if you're interested in a midsize sedan, but as tastes shift to crossovers, cars like this are becoming less relevant to most shoppers. Ah!